As a Chamber of Commerce, we really believe in the free market, which can be defined as the uninhibited movement of goods and services. And so if your business is not accessible to the consumer, then we don't really have a free market. When I talk with a large business, um, whether it's the head of the company or it's somebody who's responsible for facilities management and things of that nature, I make sure that they understand that they're liable for the accessibility of all of their sites, that they have a responsibility to ensure that their services are delivered. And also I try to instill to them the fact that there is a philosophy um, that exists about accessibility and that that's a philosophy that comes from the top down. Um, to be instilled into their local sites that they are a company that promotes inclusion of all individuals, including people with disabilities. I have three Cartridge World stores, one in downtown Chicago, two on the north side of Chicago, and it's very interesting. Three of them have very different accessibility issues. My most difficult one has two steps. Bottom line, if you're on a wheelchair or you're in crutches, you're going to have a very tough time getting into that store. The second one has a very flat surface, however, it has an extremely, extremely heavy door. The third location is actually very, very simple. It's flat um, and it's very, very wide doors. However, of all of our customers, we get about 280 among the three stores that come in. Uh, about 10 a week need the big bell. Our front door is the beginning of the customer's experience with Cartridge World. Before, when we didn't have the Big Bell, it was extremely difficult, it was extremely awkward, and about 75% of those that were uh, either elderly or disabled um, made a negative comment to us. And even though our products and service could be you know, perfectly satisfactory, bottom line is they walked away with a negative experience because we did not make our, our, our store accessible. Now after we implemented the Big Bell, it is very, very easy for my staff as well as for the disabled or the, the elderly to come in and we make it so easy, they just punch a, a little blue button the size of a fist and it, it, it looks actually cosmetically very, very good on our store and um, it couldn't even be more simple. The ADA is a civil rights law, so um, when you look at access for everyone, that's the original intent of the law. The architectural standards are a compromise within the building standards and building community as to what would be required in, as far as uh, structural access. There is recognition of the fact, though, that they still do not meet everyone's needs. They are a minimal standard recognizing that there are people who fall below. There are people who have no arms, who are not able to even use a accessible handle if there was one there. There are people who use um, electronic or other kinds of technology to be able to talk or to be able to move a wheelchair and such who still are going to fall outside the parameters of what the architectural access will provide. So businesses have a responsibility to meet the needs of that population as well. And things like using a notification devices to allow that person to tell them that they need assistance to get in the door is an example of what a business can do. This is really a bottom line issue for, for businesses. Business wants to and needs to recognize that that community represents a heck of a lot of purchasing power. And if we can reach out and make certain that those who are disabled in our communities have the ability to reach the same kinds of goods and services that anyone else does, I think it will be not only profitable for those individuals, but for the companies themselves. The goodwill that this has created, even among those that are not disabled or elderly, um, you can't put a monetary value on that.